Uh, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice. justice. justice for all. Please call the roll. Council member here. Council member Dunaway. Present. Member Fitch. Here. Council member Gray. Present. Council member Clancy. Here. Council member Trakis. Present. Present. Thank you. Present. Present. Council member Hart. Present. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of July 14th, 2020? So, so moved. moved. Second. All, the, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. The July 14th, 2020 journal is approved. Is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of July 21st, 2020? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries the July 21st, 21st, 2020 journal is approved. We have no bid openings this afternoon, so we will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no tax compromises zoning matters or road and bridge matters this afternoon, so we will move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one, fifth and sixth districts. Receive and file and that will be the order. Item number two, third district. Receive, file and refer to the budget office, the Department of Administration, the Department of Transportation and Public Works, Department of Public Health, Department of Parks and Recreation, Department of Revenue and the County Counselor. So ordered. Item number three. Receive file and the County Counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number four and that will be the order. Item number five, all districts. Receive file and the County Counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number six. Receive file and the appropriation transfer be approved as requested. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, sixth district. Receive file and the change of managing officer be approved as requested, please. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight, sixth district. Receive file and refer to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. Item number nine. Um, I've spoken with Ms. Irby about um, this item just yesterday in fact, um, and she has, uh, we have her support to move forward in this manner. Um, so with that, I will receive file and the issuance of two requests for proposal be approved as recommended. Second days. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number 11 and that will be the order. Please read the add-ons. Under other communications, item number one, third district. Receive file and refer to the council as a committee of the whole. Um, Councilman Fitch, as I shared with you this morning in a, in a, in a letter to your office, um, your um, letter is under advisement. We will take it from there. So ordered. Item number two, fourth district. 
receive file and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Um, please add me as a co-sponsor, Councilwoman Gray, and so ordered. Item number three, third district. Receive file and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number four, seventh district. Receive file and refer to the St. Louis County Economic Development Partnership. So ordered. Item number five, seventh district. Receive, file, and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. All right. We will now move to the report of the county executive. Thank you, Lisa, and good afternoon, everyone. Yesterday, I announced seven actions that we are taking to reduce the spread of COVID. 19 in St. Louis County, ranging from bars to data reporting requirements on our testing report partners. These actions are designed to reduce the spread enough that schools can offer an in classroom option this fall for the parents that choose to do so. Because the virus is not spreading at the pace that it has in the past, we are trying to manage this a bit differently this time around. We're trying to craft policies as narrowly tailored as possible achieve the public health goals without undue interference with the economy or daily life. The St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force agreed that these decisive actions were necessary to slow the transmission of COVID-19, and I appreciate their partnership. First, starting Friday at 5 p.m., only gatherings of up to 50 people will be permitted. Second, we are rolling back occupancy rules for all businesses to where they were in June. This will roll back the occupancy rules to 25% and it will help make it easier to maintain social distancing practices. This change will also take place effective 5 p.m. on Friday. Third, the Department of Public Health is ordering that all bars close to late night service. This means that bars will close at 10 p.m. each night starting Friday. This late night and early morning hours are times when social distancing, mask wearing, and avoiding crowds are simply not being followed. We are worried about outbreaks, not just among the patrons, but among the workers as well. Fourth, the Department of Public Health will initiate a new process for closing businesses as another enforcement tool. We will craft a process that gives people a fair chance to comply with the rules. But if a business is not playing by the rules after be being given a fair chance, they shouldn't be open. Our fifth change is that we will be recommending that all people who are awaiting their COVID test results quarantine until they receive the results. I hope that employers will work with the employees to make quarantining possible. We will also be taking actions this week to ensure that all testing providers are getting their results reported in a timely manner. That's number six. Finally, this week, I'm asking the Director of Human Services to look at providing safe places for teachers to quarantine who wish to do so voluntarily. We'll provide more details on these steps later this week. Please know that we are taking these steps to flatten the curve and to keep in-person schooling a safe and viable option for parents who choose to do so later this fall. This is not something I would ask the community to do if it were not for the reality that the health and welfare of our kids, our families, and our neighbors are at stake. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Page. Report of special committees. Receive file in the report dated July 21st, 2020 be adopted as submitted. Second days. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will now move into the public forum portion of our agenda this afternoon. A couple of reminders. Um, this forum is a source of pride for all of us here in St. Louis County and can serve as a positive example to residents and other policymaking bodies in our community. We encourage every person who participates in this forum to speak with tolerance and respect towards the council, towards each other, and towards other officials in county government. 
A reminder of the rules for our public forum are as follows. Only comments sent to council comments at stlouisco.com on the day in which the meeting is being held, at least an hour before the meeting is set to start, will be recorded into the public record. The email must contain the commenter's name, and the email must be 400 words or less, which is the equivalent of three minutes of verbal communication, which is the same time allotted um, when we have our in-person meetings. The administrative director or a designee will read your comment out loud during the meeting and it will be recorded <laughs> into the journal. And with that, please read the first comment. Madam Chair, we have 28 written public comments this afternoon. The first comment is from Julie McHugh. In the late 1700s, thousands of brave men fought to gain independence from an overreaching king. Men gave their lives for the sake of freedom and developed a system of checks and balances to ensure that we'd never again be subject to the rule of one man or political party. This council has done a great disservice to St. Louisans and America in failing to vote to limit the power of the county executive. One man who as a doctor has sworn to do no harm has shown a blatant lack of care for thousands of citizens with physical and mental health issues who are unable to comply with mask mandates and are therefore left with no options to obtain basic essentials without facing harassment or even physical violence. He has ignored the outcries about the mental health crisis stemming from lockdowns and has used gregarious fear-mongering tactics to keep citizens in a constant state of stress physically, mentally, and financially. Though hospitals are empty and medical personnel furloughed, he continues to feed the narrative that a virus with a 97% survival rate in a world that will never be without risk is worth shutting down everything that contributes to happiness, good health, and economic prosperity. He can't produce proof or reliable data for his claims, supports constantly contradicting CDC guidelines, and considers no dissenting opinions from the medical community or the very citizens whose physical and financial legs he has cut from under them. We the people does not just consist of citizens who gorge themselves on TV news and blindly follow the path of fear, but rather also include citizens who are intelligent, able to think critically and research thoroughly, who are experts in fields of medicine and mental health, and who deserve to be represented fairly by this council. I implore you to limit the county executive's power so that no future official can so arrogantly and dismissively rule as though the people's voices, livelihoods, and very lives don't matter. For the cause of freedom, this nation has already seen thousands of men give up their lives. We did not choose to be among them. The county executive's power must be limited to a system of checks and balances so that not a single citizen ever feels that they don't have a voice. Next comment from Anthony Merkel. We must not shut down St. Louis County again. St. Louis County is being given mandates with no public input, no vote by the council, and by an elected, unelected as county executive, Sam Page, that assumes he can just dictate what the citizens of St. Louis County can and cannot do as adults and assumes he knows best which isn't the government's job. These mandates and shutdowns are destroying our economy, hurting youth, youths by stopping school, stopping sports and discouraging youth gatherings, pushing video chats for kids, which can be a huge detriment to kids and their mental well-being and damaging businesses. It is not the government's job to tell the citizens how to live their lives or say how we live our lives. It is our job to decide what is best for ourselves and our health. Obey your oath, the Constitution, and our rights. We are a republic, not an authoritarian, authoritarian regime. Thank you. Next one from Chad Lawrence. I am writing regarding the two bills that were introduced to the council last week. I know they were turned down last week, but I was told they would be reintroduced again. I fully support Bills 151 and 152. I want these bills to be on the November ballot. For months, Sam Page has continued to close parks, churches, businesses, and now shut down youth sports 
without ever providing concrete data to support this. One person should not have full authority and control to make all these decisions on his own. He should have to answer to others and work with others to come to decisions being made for the entire county. These bills would be our chance to give power back to the voters and remove the opportunity for tyrannical overreach by a county executive. Thank you. Next one from Shannon McCullough. Once again, another week and another proclamation by the King, I mean the unelected county executive. New COVID-19 restriction number seven. The county will provide teachers with places to quarantine when schools reopen this fall. Sam Page's direct quote. This fall, they're going to be on the front lines. What about all the doctors and nurses that have been on the front lines for the last four months? What about the workers in the grocery stores and pharmacies that have been on the front lines for the last four months? What about all the essential workers that have been on the front lines for the last four months? Do none of these people count? Seriously, you're going to use taxpayer money to provide a place to quarantine for the teachers but you haven't offered this to anyone else. Definition of discrimination. The act of making distinctions between human beings based on the groups, classes, or other categories to which they are perceived to belong. And let's talk about the comment made today about overruling the schools that have already announced they would start school as normal. If you try to shut these schools down, let the lawsuits begin. I've given you the definition of tyranny before. Have you forgotten the definition or did you just not understand that I was talking about you? Tyranny, the arbitrary or unrestrained exercise of power, despotic abuse of authority. Keep it up, Sam Page and St. Louis County Council. Congratulations on robbing our children of their education for the foreseeable future. Congrats on cheating the kids in regards to sports. Great job on making decisions that you absolutely do not understand that are killing the businesses in St. Louis County. Brilliant plan, great job. Thank you so much. Next one from Shelly Meyer. We have rights. You do not have the right to take them away. We live in America. We are free to make choices. You're not a dictator and do not have that power. You are making selfish choices and decisions based on your fears and beliefs and not what is best for everyone. You need to be stopped. Next one from Tara Chambers. As a resident of St. Louis County, I feel the imposed mask mandates, lockdowns, business limitations and restrictions and hotlines for the community to snitch on non-compliant businesses are an extreme government overreach. This is an abuse of power that should never be allowed. The community is entitled to decide how to handle their health however they choose without the government dictating them or giving mandates. The risks should be up to each individual and business to decide for themselves. The risk of this virus to the average person is ridiculously low and there is no research or data to prove that any of these mandates or restrictions are necessary. Thank you for your time. Next comment from Pam Spies. I was very disappointed to hear your latest restrictions. Limiting to 50 will cancel church again, which should never happen in America. These restrictions also cause poverty, isolation, and anxiety, which can all be worse than any virus. I have cut down my shopping and dining in St. Louis County about 90%. Starting with the mask mandate, which is about submission and control because you know the stats on the effectiveness of the cloth masks that everyone is wearing. If you don't start being realistic about the needs and priorities of the good people of St. Louis County, I believe you will be voted out. Although I can't vote in your county, I know many people that will be. Please reconsider these restrictions and let the people prosper. Madam Chair, continuing, <clears throat> excuse me, the following from Kurt Witzel. Interim County Executive Page. It is very hard to believe that you see yourself as a representative of the people when over 115 people send you communications about their opinions on the shutting down of all youth sports in St. Louis County, with all but one asking you to provide any kind of rationale behind shutting down youth sports. And not only do you not take their advice, but <clears throat> excuse me, 
but you do not provide any empirical data to show that U Sports is a driver of any kind of virus. Over time and time again, you spout that you are a doctor and that you only deal with the facts and the data. But yet, you, like Moses before you, Come down from the mountain on the ninth floor, announce to the little people your demands, and scurry back up to your office, never adequately answering any questions regarding facts and figures on the youth sports issue. How does this type of action and lack of response make you fit to represent the people of St. Louis County? I would suggest that you dust off your golf clubs and start calling your patient list as you will as you will lots of time to ponder that question come January 2021. And everyone in St. Louis County continues to ask of those council squad people who voted to give Moses Page supreme authority over 175 million of our federal tax dollars because of the emergency timing. Where is the money? It is now three months into that emergency and 90% of that money, emergency money that Moses needed so immediately and so desperately to spend to help the people of North County still sits in the county bank, gaining additional dollars of interest for Moses and the squad to spend. From Richard Roden. It is my understanding that two bills have been introduced that would give the county council oversight of the county executive's decision during a pandemic. This is absolutely necessary, as no one person should have the authority to make the make decisions that will affect the economy and the well-being of all county residents without any checks and balances on that authority. The idea that the county executive can place mandates on citizens with no parameters is appalling. The idea that the county executive can declare that certain businesses must close and certain activities are forbidden or restricted indefinitely is appalling. I submit that the guidelines proposed in Bills 151 and 152 are reasonable and necessary, and I would ask that the council please play, excuse me, I would ask that the council place these restrictions on the county executive as soon as possible. Thank you, Richard Roden. The following from Valerie Lawrence. Good afternoon. I'm writing regarding the two bills that were introduced to the council last week. I fully support Bills 151 and 152. I want these bills to be a November ballot. For months, Sam Page has continued to close parks, churches, businesses, and even shut down new sports without ever providing concrete data to support this. One person should not have full authority and control to make all these decisions on his own. He has said at his briefings he is responsible for doing the right thing. By continuing to vote these bills down, it shows me he isn't a person who does the right thing. That shows, that shows he is more interested in not having accountability. He should have to answer to others and work with others to come to the decisions being made for the entire county. These bills would, give, would be our chance to give power back to the voters and remove the opportunity for tyrannical overreach by a county executive. When will you be allowing the public to come to these meetings? We should be able to attend a public meeting. There's no reason that this is still being closed to the public. Thank you, Valerie Lawrence. From Amy Eichmann. Dear Dr. Page and Council, I continue to be dismayed at the lack of transparency regarding the data used to drive health policy in St. Louis County. Since, since Dr. Page is unwilling to share the information, perhaps he could make those with such knowledge available during his Facebook pressers. It appears someone from the health department is actually running the county. I'd like to hear from someone who can answer these basic questions. Doctors from around the country are beginning to come forward about the destructive, irrational fear being promoted by Democrat politicians such as Dr. Page. These dissenting doctors are being censored from social media outlets. Pediatricians, surgeons, ER doctors, primary care physicians, research, researchers, and psychiatrists are being actively silenced. They provide data, and they are not afraid to publicly debate. One man who has not yet been silenced is Dr. Harvey Reich, MD, PhD, Professor of Epidemiology at Yale. From the following link to Newsweek article J dated July 23rd, 2020, end quote. 
As professor of epidemiology at Yale School of Public Health, I have authored over 300 peer-reviewed publications and currently hold senior positions on the editorial boards of several leading journals. I'm usually accustomed to advocating for positions within the mainstream of medicine. So have been flummoxed to find that in the midst of a crisis, I am fighting for treatment with the data fully support Excuse me. I'm fighting for a treatment that the data fully support, but which, for reasons having nothing to do with a correct understanding of the science, have been pushed to the sidelines. As a result, tens of thousands of patients with COVID-19 are dying unnecessarily. Fortunately, the situation can be reversed easily and quickly. I'm referring, of course, to the medication of hydro hydro hydroxychloroquine. Sorry. When this inexpensive oral medication is given very early in the course of illness, before the virus has had time to multiply beyond control, it is shown to be highly effective, especially when given in combination with the antibiotics azithromycin or doxycycline and the nutritional supplement of zinc, end quote. You could end this misery today. There is no need to lock anything down, frighten our children, or destroy our small businesses. Other countries are emerging from the misinformation peddled by the Chinese to influence global health organizations and those hoping to profit from a vaccine. The slow-dose medication has been prescribed successfully as a preventative to the high-risk group. Is the Democrat Party using this virus for political purposes at the expense of human lives? And that uh, ends at 400 words. The following from Diane Unger. Many months ago, when I heard that the four Democrat females on this council referred to themselves as the squad, I thought it was just a flippant comment. I thought wrong. Week after week after week, the squad votes in partisan unison. The law of averages would question this constant occurrence. Hundreds of letters from county residents stating their pleas for council consideration continue to fall on deaf ears. The squad votes in unison. It's as if minds are made up even before the residents are heard. This is such a disservice to those residents who elected you to represent them. It's obvious that their concerns get ignored as partisan politics rears its ugly head within the squad. As I intend to do, and I as I'm, excuse me, as I intend to do, and as I am sure vast numbers of other residents will also do, we will take this frustration to the polls. Submitted Diane Unger. From Brian O'Leary. Dear Emperor Page, Council Chair Clancy, and the St. Louis County Council. First, let me start by saying the four Democrat Democratic Council members who voted down Bills 151 and 152 are a complete embarrassment and are obviously not allowed to think on their own. And for Emperor Page, why do you continue to recommend all schools go strictly virtual? Can you and your task force not read? All the pediatric doctors across the country, as recently as yesterday on Capitol Hill, are stating kids must get back into school this fall in person. Not virtual, which is useless, and that the effects of not being in school are much worse. Why are you not following the science? The science clearly shows 100% survival rate for children, and in fact, that the flu is worse for kids, and it is very, very rare that kids spread the virus. This virus is killing our elderly, not our kids. So what are you even doing? It's complete insanity. Emperor Page, the decision to go virtual is not a one-shoe, excuse me, a one-shoe size fits all approach. Competent leadership should look at each district individually. For example, just because the Jennings district is having a surge in cases and chooses to go all virtual does not mean the Rockwood school district should. Where, where there is no data to back up going all virtual, the taxpayers of each district must be provided hard data of all cases in their district to justify such action. Again, that would actually take a good leader who doesn't pander to the teachers union. In fact, by law, you have zero power over school districts but again, you choose to overstep your power. Finally, Emperor Play Page, please explain how Texas and Florida are going back to school this fall and are having all fall high school sports. Two states that both have tens of thousands more cases and deaths than little old St. Louis. I will tell you how, 
It's because they have great leadership and are not scared, inept leaders who prefer to just cancel instead of finding a way to make it work. I have an idea. How about delay the start of school until September or delay all high school sports until September sometime instead of taking the easy way out and canceling? Thanks for your time. The following from Tammy Croner. It is my sincere hope that you would consider the youth of St. Louis County. Your shutdown of youth sports and recommendations for online learning in schools is greatly harming the younger generation. I have three children, 21, 18, and 15. They crave physical interaction with their peers, learning in a classroom with other students, and competing in sports. Many in the medical community agree that the younger generation are not at high risk from complications of COVID-19. I believe the individuals who have pre-existing conditions along with the older population should take precautions and be responsible for their own health and safety. The remaining county residents should be able to work, go to school, participate in activities without Dr. Page telling us how to live our lives. By returning to previous regulations, you are harming our economy and families. As American citizens, we have a constitutional right to our freedom. Thank you. Madam Chair, continuing the following comment from Lindsay Reed. I'm a resident of St. Louis County. Throughout this year, I have worked firsthand on the front lines of this COVID pandemic. I would do it over and over again for the residents in my nursing home, but they are not allowed to see their loved ones, so I have filled in and loved and cared for them. Our facility has not had any cases of COVID, yet these poor residents still cannot have visitors. It is truly heartbreaking to see. These are the most vulnerable, and I understand why we have put restrictions on them. What I do not understand is restrictions on youth sports and schools. If a certain school has large numbers, I fully understand and support closing that individual school until cases drop. However, closing all in St. Louis County is asinine. Why punish the schools and youth sports who are not seeing increased cases or any cases for that matter? Youth sports, I was told by Paige's office, is not the problem, then why are they being punished? Also, I asked for the data that shows the youth sports cases and increases and was told by Paige's office they, have, they didn't have it. If you cannot produce data, then why is he allowed to ruin people's lives? Also, how can Paige dictate what schools do with the following law? Six, section 18C. Provisions authorized in county charters, participation by county and government of other local units. The charter may provide for the vesting and exercise of legislative power pertaining to any and all services and functions of any municipality or political subdivision except school districts. Why is it okay to violate the above law but still allow protests to continue? Aren't we a country built on law and order? This isn't a salad bar. Page doesn't get to pick and choose what laws he follows and the ones he doesn't want to. We want our kids in school playing youth sports until it is truly not safe for them. Until actual data shows this is not safe, why is this happening? Lockdown was to not overload our hospitals. It was not meant to last until the virus is wiped out. Also, my last concern is what is going on with Sam Page and Lieutenant Colonel Doyle and how Page thinks he is above any law. I am attaching the letter retired Chief Fitch sent and hope it will be read and addressed. And I'm stopping there. That is 400 words. Next comment from Deb Matush. The more I pay attention to council meetings and public briefings, the more I think I need to pay attention. I always trusted that those chosen, appointed, have our best interest at heart. I no longer think this. Commercials and ads during election cycles look great, but reality is that it's mostly not true. It's actually kind of sad. Whether you got voted to your position or unduly appointed as an interim executive, it feels like a ruse on the taxpayers, which, le which led me directly to you, Mr. Page. I listened to your briefing live yesterday and just kept shaking my head in disbelief. If ever an executive were in a wrong position, it is you. It happens in the corporate world all the time. The difference is your education is not in business. It's in making sure people are drugged properly. 
Those of us paying attention don't want to be drugged by your you, sna you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours campaign favors. For those listening, follow Sam's donors for an idea who's paying to play. Do that with all candidates. Here's my request of all of you. One, protesters and rabble-rousers seem to get a pass while the rest of us are expected to heal. Govern with equality, not political leanings. Two, youth both in sports and education. You did a jelly roll in your brief yesterday, Sam, when you pressed here. You stripped away the two things of continuity they have. You took something that doesn't belong to you. Give it back. Three, what's with the co-op agreement with the county and Metro Park Rec for 20 years? We should have a say on this. Our tax dollars are not for sale in perpetuity every 20 years like a deed restriction. No on this agreement. Four, our tax base is dwindling. This is where you lack, where your lack of business experience is most obvious. Not only Sam, but you too, Council. Businesses are handcuffed by your policies and beginning to close forever. If masks work, why are you doing this? Aside from the banner-waving gang of four, we all know where you stand week after week. Where are the rest of you? Please stand up. You will have the support of the good citizens of St. Louis County. Next comment from Kathy Schreck. Hi, I am a resident of North St. Louis County. I have been a neighborhood watch coordinator for about 26 years. I have seen a lot. Myself, along with other leaders, try to work with our county leaders to improve our properties. I'm sorry to say the last county executive that put forth an effort was Charlie Dooley. I would like to hear some issues that St. Louis County is facing and would like to see more involvement with our county executive. All we hear about when we want something done is the county doesn't have the resources or funds. While neighborhood preservation is a very good idea, this department does not have the resources to solve the problems on the properties in our subdivisions. The supervisors and inspectors do their jobs, but need funds to make it successful. Our problem properties unit we had a few years ago in North County did an amazing job on our streets. Our current PPU was heard at a meeting saying how proud they were to repair properties and let the same people move back in. Isn't this a waste of resources? We have seen a decline of progress with our current PPU. Another false front was the meetings held for input for our police chief. Many, many citizens in all four meetings were very positive of Lieutenant Colonel Doyle for our next chief. He came up through the ranks and is St. Louis County's go-to officer when they need the job to get done. So the politics of picking a chief raised its ugly head and picked a person that many feel wasn't the right choice. This chief has made no attempt to meet with neighborhood leaders. I do want to thank our council person, Ms. Days. One phone call and she made it her mission to call me back, set up a date to meet, showed up, rode our area and took many needed pictures of houses falling down, weeds as high as the houses, trash, vehicles parked illegally, etc. It's not unusual to see snakes, rats, mice, raccoons, possums in our yards and streets. Thank you for your time. Next comment from Mary Ann Power. As a concerned parent of an elementary school student, I am concerned at your continued narrative to attempt to persuade districts to start the school year completely virtually when the evidence from the CDC and American Academy of Pediatrics continues to declare the importance of reopening schools full time and in person this fall. The evidence concludes that children are not major spreaders of the virus. Dr. Page, you have access to the same scientific evidence that is published to all of us. And with you as a physician, I am disappointed that you continue to choose politics over sound science using our children as political pawns. Children have been especially harmed by the outcome of this pandemic, not in harm to their physical health, but because of policies not in line with current scientific evidence to shut down their schools, their sports, and even their churches. Camps have been open very successfully this summer, and yet you advise that schools should be sh shuttered. It doesn't make sense. 
You allowed bars to remain open and protests and riots to occur unchecked, all while shutting down Little League and spreading propaganda to persuade substandard education for the children of our county. Recommending that schools should open virtually is irresponsible and negatively impacts the mental health, welfare, and education of children. Yes, teachers should be given proper PPE to feel safe, but, but every support should be put into place to bring children back to normalcy at the earliest onset, the start of the school year. Please consider what is best for our children and turn your attention toward science rather than the money that the teachers union is giving to your campaign. We trust that you have the best interest of the children at heart and ask you to work with us in finding safe ways to open schools five days per week. While we know you do not run the school districts, we need your help to work with, not against the needs of the children of this community. Next comment from Katie Lowe. Please don't let the fear run our actions. People are driven by fear, but it is the wrong source of motivation. Please give more consideration to other doctors that are giving hope. I will not be forced to wear a face mask by my government. Masks are a choice. Next comment from Celeste Witzel. During the past four months, the public has had to witness Kelly Dunaway eating, munching, chewing, crunching, and gulping on WebEx. Can't she find 15 minutes prior to Tuesday council meetings to eat, chew, crunch, and gulp in private? This is an official public meeting, not diners, drive-ins, and dives. Citizens also witnessed Dunaway play with her hair, scalp, eyebrows, laugh out loud, and smirk at citizen comments she disagrees with yawn, display her bored and arrogant looks, and generally look silly. Citizens have also witnessed Dunaway's kids frolicking in the background during meetings. These are official county council meetings involving serious taxpayer business, and yet we watch Dunaway goofing off. Dunaway is also using county resources to campaign by positioning her campaign sign in the background during official county council web meetings. Is Dunaway reporting this free advertising to the MEC, and is this even legal? Council Chair Lisa Clancy's behavior is not much better. She gulps her soda, waves her iPhone around like it's a firearm, does her fair share of smirking during public comments, and generally appears distracted. Seemingly, both Dunaway and Clancy text during official council meetings. Dunaway seemingly turns off the volume during public comments that she doesn't agree with. This county has 1 million citizens. Can't we do any better than these two individuals? Is this the best the citizens of District 5 can hope for? A bored and unprofessional Kelly Dunaway who treats council meetings like an annoyance and who openly uses county resources during official meetings to campaign for election. Citizens need real help regarding crime, COVID, health, safety, and zoning issues financial issues, work issues, children not being able to attend school or play sports, etc. And yet Dunaway and Clancy goof off. And Dunaway openly campaigns during official county council meetings. Neither offers help to citizens. Hopefully the citizens of District 5 are fed up and will select Barry Glantz in the August 4 primary to serve the constituents of District 5 with respect, seriousness, and professionalism and to halt the current sideshow Kelly Dunaway has become. Dunaway's immature behavior and shameless abuse of county resources to campaign disrespects all citizens who need real help. Rome is burning. District 5 has a chance to help pour water on the fire by electing Barry Glantz on August 4th. Next comment from Tom Sullivan. I have some things to mention. One, it was recently reported that the bond sale for the expansion of the Downtown Convention Center has been delayed. On June 2nd, I asked Council Chairwoman Lisa Clancy if she could provide answers as to the status of the $15.3 million the Council approved as front money for the expansion. I am still waiting on a response. The $15.3 million goes towards the $240 million the County is to give toward the $480 million total cost of the Convention Center expansion. Number two, last week the Post-Dispatch had a story from its Jefferson City Bureau about the Sam Page campaign accepting $2,049 in campaign contrib 
contributions from the Political Action Committee tied to a Jefferson City lobbyist and company under FBI investigation. Earlier this year, the Lisa Clancy campaign accepted a $500 contribution from the same lobbyist, but nothing in the Post-Dispatch about it. Number three, it was disclosed yesterday in a campaign report that a Centene Corporation attorney made a $5,000 campaign contribution to the Sam Page campaign. This takes the total of Centene Connected contributions to the Page campaign to $168,300, the largest to the campaign. As you know, a former top Centene executive is the lead advisor on the secret, secretly run five-member advisory group deciding how the, the $173.5 million COVID funding grant is to be spent. The spending has been criticized for being wasteful and also helping to promote the PAGE campaign. Also, it was Centene Executive Tom Irwin who was pushing the St. Louis County Police Review on the St. Louis County Board of Police Commissioners on behalf of Sam Page. You might recall last year when it seemed Mr. Page was saying then police chief John Belmar should be replaced. But after Centene CEO Michael Neerdorf expressed support for Belmar, the county executive backed off. Just recently, it was said Sam Page did not want county police Lieutenant Colonel Doyle, Lieutenant, excuse me, Lieutenant Colonel Troy Doyle picked as chief because powerful people with a lot of money did not want a black chief. Who are these people? Is it easy to get the feeling that county government is being run by Centene? Thank you for listening to my comments. Madam Chair, continuing, <clears throat> excuse me, the following from Kate Stratton. I was troubled to hear interim page during his briefing yesterday, once again, instilling fear and promoting virtual learning. Many area pediatricians don't agree that children are causing an increase in the spread of the coronavirus and need to be kept out of school buildings or playing sports in St. Louis County. Is that why you refuse to argue data when questioned at the briefing two weeks ago? Are you trying to hide from the residents of St. Louis County? On July 17th, the Post-Dispatch article stated, as St. Louis County officials tighten the rules Thursday around participation in youth sports, pediatricians push back on the assertions that kids' sports are a primary driver of the spread of the coronavirus. What well, pediatricians are on the Sports Medicine Task Force. The residents deserve to know who is influencing you. Where is the data to back up your decision to keep sports locked down? St. Louis County has had a mask mandate for weeks, why is St. Louis County going backward and only going to allow occupants, occupancy to 25% if your mask mandate is so effective? Again, where is the data to support this decision? Is this mandate going to apply to the rioters in our streets? During, this pre during his press conference yesterday, Interim Page refused to say that the new restrictions apply to protesters and rioters. Last week, Councilman Fitch and Harder proposed Bills 151 and 152 to permit the voters to have a say in how our lives are controlled by our elected officials during a pandemic. 114 people wrote letters last week with many of the, with many wanting the bills to have. But like in the past, excuse me, the squad didn't listen to county residents and voted like their squad leader wanted them to. This pandemic has shown us that too much power rests in the hands of people who refuse to be accountable to the taxpayers. Councilman Trakis has requested an ethics committee investigation into the leases at Northwest Plaza, now Northwest Crossings. Will the council be transparent and schedule a meeting of the Committee of the Whole? Is the county council ever going to meet in person to face county residents again? The residents of St. Louis County deserve better. We need answers and the truth. You are not providing that. Missouri is the show me state. Show us the data. Thank you, Kate Stratton. From Linda Krenning, I'm writing you about 7190 Christopher. I wanted to thank you for listening to all the concerns the residents have about the property of 7190 Christopher. All we, are, all we were asking was to be heard, and I want to thank Beth Orwick and Gail Choate for taking another look at what's really going on at this property. It should... It should have popped a red flag 
I'm sorry. It should have popped a flag when they wanted to put 19 parking spots in front of a single family home in a residential neighborhood and you were on it. This doesn't really fit with this family owned residential neighborhood. Montanito is a very powerful and wealthy business and usually gets their way wherever they go. Residents of Christopher want to thank our St. Louis County Council for listening and being there for us. You listened. Thank you. The following from Julie Nguyen. I hope I pronounced that correctly. To the St. Louis County Council, I am urging our respective leaders to begin conversation on how we, the residents and of the prosperous and privileged parts of the county, take more responsibility for our neglect of our neighbors in North County and city. It's no secret our suburban history is rooted in racism. To deny our role and responsibility is ignorant and willfully complicit in furthering racism. County Executive Page acknowledged in his June 30th report the issue of systemic racism present, present in our law enforcement. This goes far beyond policing. It is how we, the privileged, view ourselves in respect to North County. It is in how we vote for ordinances and legislation that seemingly help those communities as long as it doesn't impact our communities. Betsy Hodges, former Minneapolis mayor, wrote an excellent opinion piece published in the New York Times about how privileged voters deny their racism by voting for superficial change in the form of funding pilot programs, volunteer programs, and the like, while asking our police officers to do the dirty work of keeping their crime from our communities, using voter-approved methods and legislation. As a result, our police officers are now bearing the brunt of the outrage. While we, the privileged voters, sit at home, consuming the news, shaking our heads, and disregarding our own part in all of this. Recently, cities across the nation began taking steps toward reparations of some, of some form. St. Louis County must also take steps towards real meaningful repair. Specifically, how can we share our wealth and prosperity to lift our neighbors up? What current ordinances are in place that need to be reexamined through the lens of racism? How are we enabling racist attitudes and opinions, whether knowingly or not, through the measures we pass or reject? Mr. Michael Niedorf, Centene CEO, threatened to relocate his headquarters to North Carolina with a stern warning to St. Louis leaders and residents, get it together or continue to see companies and economic opportunities pass us by. Crime in and attracting quality employees to, the Saint, to St. Louis are tied to racism and oppression. All of us residents have a stake in this. We must do our part to strengthen the entire region for the benefit of all, socially and economically. As the heart of America, we should be leading this fight against racism in all its forms. Thank you for your time. Following from Chris Struckoff, it pains me to see our county executive play politics during such trying times. I didn't hear Sam Page condemn the violence in the streets during the recent riots here in St. Louis, causing death, bodily injury, and damage to private and government property. Instead, I heard him say that he was going to rename streets whose names were offensive to some. I didn't hear Sam Page thank the police for all they were enduring during these riots. Instead, I heard him announce an investigation of the police department before they had the authority, before he had the authority to do so. I didn't hear Sam Page condemn the rioters for not social distancing. Earlier, Sam Page had asked people to snitch on their neighbors if they were not following the rules of social distancing. I didn't hear Sam Page. He wanted to see CARES Act money be shared by all who suffered from the effects of the coronavirus. Instead, I heard him play to the black community to obtain their votes by saying he wanted to see a larger portion of funds go to the black community as they suffered the most. I thought we were not to discriminate and all who suffered should be included equally regardless of race. From Krista Abney. This is in regards to your unilateral decision to once again take away youth sports from St. Louis County. As a physician, you should be well aware of the positive impact youth sports, specifically team sports, and physical activity have on growing brains. The science simply does not warrant keeping children away from their peers and locking it locked in their homes. Furthermore, 
Science actually proves your actions to be extremely detrimental to their health, significantly more so than getting COVID-19. For, for some, removing activities might cause them to turn to drugs, alcohol, or crime. Another very harmful aspect of the unconstitutional lockdowns is the destruction of family-owned and small businesses. I have many friends who own small businesses and their life's work is gone. Families are being ripped apart due to your actions. I do not understand why intelligent people cannot make the correlation between increased testing and increased cases. It's pretty simple. We must end these lockdowns or phase rollbacks immediately. It is vital to our community. Thank you, Krista Abney. The following from Eric Reynolds. This commentary represents my third week in a row of providing feedback to this council. Interim County Executive Page, <clears throat> excuse me, in that short span of time, has already sealed his fate now that the documented evidence has surfaced demonstrating his narcissistic, racist, and power-hungry management of a new county police chief selection. In order to avoid wasting everyone's time concerning the ridiculous management by Page, since he will soon be irrelevant with regards to public matters. I'd like to ask the remaining elements of the County Council to use this opportunity to focus on the following. Reopen these meetings to the public who elected you. Reopen our county to the public who elected you. First it was death rates, then it has changed to cases when the death rates were too low, and since that is, and since that is like a bad cold for 97% of the people. What's next if the case, case numbers slow? Will it be people who knew someone who thought they had COVID? Will that be the next reason why ceaseless shutdown mandates need to come from county government? Reopen you sports immediately. Given soon to be former interim county executive Page's recent recordings, this was clearly a putative action which you orchestrated through the health department. Reopen your eyes, hearts, and minds to constructive bipartisan dialogue on where the county goes forward from here and lead from the front. We need all of you to be leaders and work together. Thank you in advance for using this opportunity to reset your focus on collaboration and representation. Eric Reynolds. From Jennifer Reynolds. We, the citizens of St. Louis County, deserve to attend meetings in person. It is unlawful for you to hold these meetings without allowing the public in-person participation. Comments read by the clerks cannot possibly convey the passion and resoluteness of our concerns. Furthermore, we deserve to be looked in the eye while delivering our comments to the council. Title 7, Chapter 703.070 of the St. Louis County Code of Ordinances. A state of emergency can only be called if there is an actual enemy attack upon the United States or the occurrence of a disaster from fire, flood, earthquake, or other natural causes involving eminent peril to the lives and property in St. Louis County. There is absolutely nothing that addresses the state of emergency due to public health. There is no enemy attack on the United States or natural disaster. We are not facing eminent, about to happen, peril, serious immediate danger. There are no grounds for a local emergency in our county. The coronavirus does not meet the definition for a state of emergency. There is no enemy attack and no natural disaster of eminent apparel. Since the state of emergency declaration by Sam Page on March ter on, excuse me, since the state of emergency declaration by Sam Page on March 13th, 2020 is unlawful, all Department of Health orders, policies, and rules are unlawful and invalid as well. Thus, according to the St. Louis County law, the grounds for the state of emergency do not exist. Therefore, the state of emergency should be determined. I would like to know what the lawmakers are doing to address this invalid and unlawful state of, of emergency declaration. Sam states the new restrictions are due to increased cases. What about the death rate? And why is this not clearly stated on the STL Corona website? I had to do the calculations myself, and here's what I found. As of 726, 2020, St. Louis County has had a death rate of 0.06%. If you are aged 0 to 69, that rate is 0.03%. If you are seven, if you are 
0 to 79, that rate is 0.01%. Why is this not reported and celebrated? The elderly population, by and large, are not in the workforce anymore. Why are we not protecting the vulnerable, quarantining the sick, and letting the rest of us go back to work and school? By the way, Sweden, who did none of these draconian measures, has a death rate of 0.06%. Madam Chair, that completes the public forum. Thank you, Chris. We will move on to introduction of bills. Bill number 168, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $24,999.99 from the Missouri Department of Social Services, appropriating the same for support of the family courts, substance abusing families engaged in treatment and intervention program, and authorizing the director of operations for the family court to execute necessary documents. Bill number 169, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $10,000 from the Office of State Courts Administrator, appropriating the same support of the family court's use of global positioning satellite monitoring as a detention alternative for youth admitted to secure detention and authorizing the director of operations for the family court to execute necessary documents. Bill number 170 introduced by council member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $10,000 from the office of state courts administrator appropriating the same for support of the provision of certain legal services for parents involved in the juvenile court system and authorizing the director of operations for the family court to execute necessary documents. Bill number 171 introduced by council member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $1,260,599 from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, appropriating the same for support of the Department of Human Services Continuum of Care Programs and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 172, introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to grant a non-exclusive easement to and execute a cooperation agreement with the Metropolitan Park and Recreation District doing business as Great Rivers Greenway District for the construction, operation, and maintenance of a portion of the St. Vincent Greenway and authorizing the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to execute related documents. Bill number 173 introduced by Council Member Clancy an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $672,338.10 from the Missouri Department of Transportation, appropriating same for support of the Commercial Motor Vehicle Enforcement Unit of the Police Department, authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 174, introduced by Council Member Dunaway, declaring the public an ordinance declaring the public necessity of and providing for the replacement of the Lackland Road Crossroad Culvert Number C-2-116 and establishing a section of public road designated as Lackland Road lying wholly within the City of Maryland Heights, Missouri, directing the acquisition of real property therefore and authorizing the County Executive to execute contracts, agreements, and related documents. AR-1714. Bill number 175, introduced by Council Member Spitch and Harder. An ordinance calling and providing for the holding of an election in St. Louis County on the third day of November 2020 for the purpose of submitting to the qualified voters of St. Louis County a proposition to amend the St. Louis County Charter to provide that in the event of a pandemic, no state of emergency declared by the county executive pertaining thereto shall extend for a duration beyond the 15th day following the effective date of such declaration unless the county council by a two-thirds majority vote adopts a resolution approving extension of such order 
and setting forth the duration that the state of emergency shall remain effective. Bill number 176, introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. An ordinance calling and providing for the holding of an election in St. Louis County on the third day of November 2020 for the purpose of submitting to the qualified voters of St. Louis County a proposition to amend the St. Louis County Charter to provide that in the event of a pandemic, no public health order issued by the Director of the Department of Public Health pertaining thereto shall extend for a duration beyond the 15th day following the effective date of such order unless the County Council, by a two-thirds majority vote, adopts a resolution approving extension of such order and setting forth the duration that the state of emergency or order shall remain effective. Bill number 177 introduced by Council Member Clancy. An ordinance amending the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and the official zoning district maps by changing the boundaries of the NU non-urban district and the R3 10,000 square foot residence district of certain land as provided herein. PC 05-20 Jim Brennan. Bill number 178 introduced by Council Member Clancy. An ordinance authorizing and giving preliminary approval to a planned environment unit development of attractive land located in the R-3 10,000 square foot residence district subject to conditions PC 06-20 Jim Brennan. Bill number 179 introduced by Council Member Fitch. An ordinance amending the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and the official zoning district maps by changing the boundaries of the R-1A 22,000 square foot residence district and the NU non-urban district as provided herein and repealing ordinance numbers 27,333 and 27,334. PC 08-20 St. Louis County Planning Commission. Bill number 180 introduced by Council Member Fitch. An ordinance amending ordinance number 21,917 as amended by repealing and reenacting section two pertaining to PC 99-03 Rolls Company. Bill number 181 introduced by Council Member Trakis. An ordinance or an ordinance number 27,243 as amended is amended by repealing and reenacting section three pertaining to PC 25-18 Sentinel Emergency Solutions LLC. Bill number 182, introduced by Council Member Trakis. An ordinance amending ordinance number 25,534 as amended by repealing and reenacting section three pertaining to PC 20-13 A-1 locker rental self-storage. Madam Chair, that is all the bills. Thank you, we will move along to perfection. Bill number 20, introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold bill number 20. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number five, introduced by Council Members Fitch, Trakis, and Harder. I move to hold bill number five. Bill number five is held. Bill number 32, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Councilman Trakis, you're on mute. My apologies. Please hold bill number 32. Thank you, sir. Bill number 32 is held. Bill number 36 introduced by Council Member Fitch. I move to hold bill number 36. Bill number 36 is held. Bill number 76 introduced by Council Members Dunaway and Harder. I move to hold bill number 76. Bill number 76 is held. Number 165, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect bill number 175. Second, oh, harder. I'm sorry, 165, I'm sorry. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? 
Motion carries. Bill number 165 is perfected. Bill number 166 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 166. Second, days. All in favor? Aye. Aye. An echo. Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 166 is perfected. Bill number 167 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect bill number 167. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 167 is perfected. Final passage. Bill number 320 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move to hold substitute bill number two for bill number 385. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 is held. Bill number 14 introduced by Council Members Trachus, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. Uh, move to hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Bill number 153 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 153. Second, Councilman Gray. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trachus. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 153, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 153 is finally passed. Bill Number 154, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill Number 154. Second, Gray. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye, please. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trachus. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 154, there are seven ayes. Bill number 154 is finally passed. Bill number 155 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 155. Second, sorry. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trachus? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 155, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 155 is finally passed. Bill Number 156, introduced by Council Member Hayes, Dunaway, Walton Gray, Trachus, and Fitch for Harder. I move for final passage of bill number 156. Second, Trakers. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trachus? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 156, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 156 is finally passed. Bill Number 157, introduced by Council Members Dunaway and Trachus. I move for final passage of Bill Number 157. Second, Trachus. 
Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 157, there are seven ayes. Bill number 157 is finally passed. Bill number 158 introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. I move for final passage of Bill number 158. Second days. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 158, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 158 is finally passed. Bill Number 159, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill Number 159. Second, Harder. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 159, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 159 is finally passed. Bill number 160, introduced by Council Member Days. I move for final passage of Bill number 160. Second, Harder. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 160, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 160 is finally passed. Bill Number 161 introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move for final passage of Bill Number 161. Second, days. Roll call. Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 161, there are seven ayes. Bill number 161 is finally passed. Bill number 162 introduced by Council Member Fitch for Council Member Harder. I move for final passage of bill number 162. Second, Trakis. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 162, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 162 is finally passed. Bill Number 163, introduced by Council Member Fitch for Council Member Harder. I move for final passage of Bill number 163. Second, Fitch. Roll call. Member Days. Aye. 
Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Tragus? Aye. And Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 163, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 163 is finally passed. Bill number 164, introduced by Council Member Trakas. Move for final passage of Bill number 164, please. Second. Second. Order. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. And Council Member Harder? Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 164, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 164 is finally passed. Madam Chair, we have no resolutions this afternoon, so we will move to unfinished business. Unfinished business, item number one. Please hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Item number two. Please hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Item number three. Please hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Item number four, fourth district. The new liquor license be approved as, re as requested. Second days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number five. Um, again, um, we will, with the support of Ms. Irby, as I mentioned, I spoke with her yesterday. Um, we did approve an RFP process um, for the purposes of these requests earlier in this meeting um, so that our these requests are more aligned to um, our current ordinance related to minority women in business enterprise participation. So with that, we will drop from the order of business and that will be the order. Number six. Again, we will drop from the order of business and that will be the order. Moving on to new business this evening or this afternoon, we have three prepared orders. The first order Number one is in the matter of the request of the records manager for permission to destroy certain books, papers, and records of the Department of Public Health. I move for the adoption of order number one, please. Second days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. Order number two is in the matter of communication from Jennifer Keating, Acting Director of Procurement, and Todd A. Martin, Director of Administration, requesting authorization to dispose of certain personal property. I move for the adoption of order number two. Second days. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number two is adopted. Aye. And our final order this evening is in the matter of the date and time for the next regular meeting of the County Council. Yes, this um, order indicates that the next meeting of the Council will be held on Tuesday, August 11th, I believe. Tuesday, August 11th. August 11th, we will not have a Council meeting on next Tuesday. I move for the adoption of order number three. Second days. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number three is adopted. That brings us to the end of our agenda this afternoon. Any comments from the council? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Councilman Harder. Aye. Uh, I believe the council was in receipt of the uh, report from the health department concerning uh, the council chambers.
and whether we could get back in there for our regular meetings. Um, I assume everybody got that letter. Is that true? Yes, I, I asked our, our clerk to distribute that to the council when I received it yesterday, and I believe that did happen. It will be on our agenda okay. on August 11th. When you say it's going to be on the agenda for discussion or for what? Well, it will be on our agenda as a communication, and um, if we are interested in further discussing it, we can refer it to a committee of the whole. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, I hope everyone enjoys their recess over the next week. Take care, be safe, stay healthy. Um, see everyone on the other side. Uh, I, think, I, I think we need to move for adjournment. Oh, I'm sorry, I rushed ahead. That's all right, that's okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Days. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.